happy Friday. Thanks for coming to another craft night with friends. We are working on the back of the granny square quilt. We got quite a ways last night. We got about eh, halfway done or so. Uh, we have two more rows to put on and then the borders. So the borders we have to make yet. So thanks again for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So, all right, let's get going on the granny square quilt, uh, the back of it. So, all right, let's go. Okay, everyone, uh, we got our back of the quilt. Let's um, grab our next row. So we have, we started at the bottom. So I actually have rows five, four, and three on here. And you know what? I think I'm just going to keep adding to the large piece. Every once in a while, you, you um, instead of like keeping on adding to the super large piece, you might want to do like the smaller pieces and put them together. So I could put row one and two together now, but this stuff is already here. Um, it's gonna take up a lot of space no matter what I do. So I think I'm just gonna keep adding to what I got here. So this is row two flipped, flipped this way. So I need to press the seams for this. They need to go in the opposite direction as these. So these ones, uh, I have this upside down. So. In reality, right side up, the odds I have going to the left and the evens I have going to the right. But since I kind of have this placed upside down, I'm actually going to do the evens to the left from this position. So that should get the seams so they are going opposite from each other, uh, which will help us get like perfect, perfect seams. All right, iron's heated up. Let's get cracking. So ideally we'll finish this back tonight, but I don't know. We have all, of, we have the borders to do yet too. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I definitely think we'll be able to get these last two um, rows onto this middle area. So that'll be good. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Uh, Terry says hello from Southeast Minnesota and Lenore from Kenosha. Thanks again for joining. I'm giving it a little press as I go as well too. All right. If you comment on TikTok, I just have to get up and look at your comments because they're a little far away for me to see, but I can see when they pop on. So I'll um, do my best to answer questions and stuff from over there as well. Oh man, you guys, I did like some push-ups. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I did some push-ups and I... Um, uh, did something weird to my shoulder. So now like if I hold it out and I have weight on it, like this iron, it's doing some weird locking thing. So I don't know. We have a Theragun thing that we just got. Um, I'm gonna have to use that a little bit uh, in the next few days, I think. Let me, do you guys have anything like that? The, like a Theragun? That's that, um, it was definitely a splurge. It was a birthday. It was a birthday thing basically for John and me. Uh, for our ailing bodies, basically, our aging, ailing bodies, uh, it's just kind of is a massager, basically. It just um, can get right into the muscles. <laughs> so it's actually really helped with John's back and um, helped my back too, but now my shoulder is weird. I wonder if I kind of loosened up everything. So now my shoulder's trying to compensate. That could be, I just got to get consistent with it. But let me know if you guys have used anything like that. All right, I'm just clipping these all together. So the same way as last night, I'm matching up the seams first. 
and then I'm going back and adding a couple clips here and there. And I did, I did actually check the bobbin. We have tons of um, bobbin left, so I did not wind anymore uh, yet. I think we're gonna be a-okay for the rest of the evening here. Um, I peeked the other time and I didn't think there was a lot, but I pulled it all the way out uh, of the machine and there was tons left, so I don't, I think we'll be fine. Oh, Pamela says, I wish I would have done this quilt. Oh, but all the cutting at the beginning was so overwhelming. I totally agree, Pamela. That that was overwhelming for me, all that cutting. Um, you know, if you do it all in a, one session instead of me, like where I only have like a couple hours in the week and then I'm done with it, um, then it it's definitely feels like a lot more. Uh, and I probably didn't actually really need to cut the whole thing at first. A lot of times I don't do that. I, I'll cut the pieces as I need them, or I'll cut like a batch of pieces and and start sewing. This was kind of the first time I think really that I'm like, I'm just going to do exactly what the instructions say I'm, well actually, <laughs> that's not true because I adjusted it a lot around, along the way, but at the beginning I um, was like, I'm going to just do like cut cut it all first, like they have the cutting instructions, I'm just going to cut it all. Uh, I don't usually do that, I I kind of cut a little bit, sew a little bit, cut some more, and keep going. Oh no, Becky says, yes, just wait till you get to be 58, I fell on the grass. When I stepped into a small hole walking Poppy. Oh no! Hopefully you you're okay. Ugh. It's actually kind of scary walking on our lawn. Our lawn is all full of little nooks and crannies. Okay, we are clipped and uh, now we can sew row two to all the rest of it. And uh, then we'll just have row one left. Besides, um, besides the, the border still. Okay, here's actually where it would be good to get, maybe get those cutting gloves out that I can use as sewing gloves. Let's see. Oh, I do have it in, I do have it with arm's reach. That's great. So th this is what I use for the cutting glove, but since we're so bulky over here now, I think it's gonna help just move move my pieces forward a little bit. I'm not really like moving the pieces forward, but just keeping them from twisting and stuff. I just, I can just lay my hand lightly on uh, the fabric instead of actually trying to like push and hold with my hand. Because my hand slips, but, but this doesn't. The glove. Whew. I'm not sewing perfectly straight though. Okay, let's try and get these to match. Okay, look for match still. Oh, you just scraped your, your knee a little. Ugh. Still not fun. I'm like sewing and then peeking up at you guys' comments. <laughs> Going back at it. This is sewing to the center square, this white piece. So we're, we're right in the middle here now. Ooh, that's 
get that seam underneath there. So we'll we'll get to see how well we're doing on seam allowances too. Probably not great, but like when we get the borders on, since the borders aren't as pieced, um, we'll um, hopefully they'll match up. But the more when you have lots of items uh, like fabric pieces that are that are pieced together, and you're sewing it to something that is like pre-measured, that's not pieced, that pre-measured piece is going to be perfect, right? Like our border um, versus all of our pieced items that should end up to be the same length, but with the little variances in seam allowance size, like a millimeter here and a millimeter there, those kind of can add up over, you know, that measurement. All right, so then we got to like stretch and ease things a little bit. We'll see how that goes. All right, got our leader on there. Let's snip and uh, um, we will give it a press. So, okay, here we are. I was a little sideways there. So add it on the next uh, piece there. There we got our, we have our little center, center kind of square going. So here's the center. It's all going around, around that. Um, let's get my little leader off of here and then let's press right away. So I'm pressing down. I should, let's flip it over. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. Actually, these are kind of pressed up when I'm from this direction. Okay, I'm gonna go across. We'll get this pressing done. Then we gotta press um, row one, and then we can uh, get this back together. All right, and then we can see how we did on these seams too, how close we got to matching them. Ugh, this is getting to the super bulky stage. Not sure I like that. Taking up too much space on my table here. This uh, cordless iron, though, is so nice. I don't have to deal with um, like my cord hanging over this entire piece here. I can just worry about pressing. Okay, last kind of segment here. All right, let's flip it around and see how we did here. All right, so that seems looking pretty good. I'm not sure I pressed this enough. Let's get it from the front again here a little bit. Like this seam just feels like not completely flat. Just gonna try and get in that seam allowance a little bit more. Eh, otherwise I think we did okay. Yep, the cordless, uh, it's also a steam iron, um, Kimberly, yes. I have not used it with steam, but yeah, it has a, um, it has a tank on there for steam. I've actually never filled it up. Um, I should do that. <laughs> should do that sometime for sure. I should do a whole like cleaning of it because it's 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 getting gook on the bottom and and all that. It's it's time to 
give it a clean and it's it, the base is getting real dusty from all the fuzzles hanging out everywhere so um maybe then i should try steaming it using the steamer all right that's a good looking seam right there. That must have been our first one. That one's matched up really well. All right, so there we are. That is uh, row two through five. And now let's shush it aside again and let's press row one, last row. Okay, so now this one, the seam allowances will go um, this way. Let's start over here. See, because they're every which way now. So pressing them this way, one way will. The opposite way of the row before. And we'll be good to go for matching up our seams, hopefully. giving the fabric a little pull just so I can get all that fold open. Alright, shush to the next one. Let's match these up. Okay, row one, I'm gonna fold that over. And with right sides together, let's match this up. Uh, it's like a really bright pink, uh, Becky. So I, it's kind of a reddish pink, but I would still call it in the pink realm. side as well. So theoretically when I'm done with this I can take these numbers off and eh, maybe I'll leave them on just so I know what the top and bottom is although it doesn't really matter. So I suppose I could take them off afterwards. I'll just leave them on for now until the whole thing's together. Alright, getting that middle piece. dropping clips. There we are. Oh, thanks, Becky. Oh, look, I got oil all over my hand. I had, I've lost a um, clip underneath my iron, or not my iron, my uh, sewing machine. Sewing machine oil. I guess we don't need to oil it yet. <laughs> so I think I might have mentioned this before. This is just like anyone cares, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. <laughs> I am a, uh, I am binge watching um, Lois and Clark. Do you guys remember that show? Apparently, it started in uh, it was 1993. Uh, it's Lois and Clark: The New Adventures of Superman. <laughs> It's the perfect do any other thing while you watch TV show. It's just easy and cute and sweet and fun. 
<laughs> and I don't have to pay attention to it at all. It's, it's, uh, it's my newest binge, background binge. <laughs> Deborah watched it when it was not a rerun. Me too. And that's, that's, uh, that's what made me remember it. It popped up on, on HBO. I mean, HBO is showing all the DC comic stuff and all that. I mean, you know, so it's got Wonder Woman and, and all, all those new movies out and stuff. So I think, I think they're rolling with it and they're, they brought back, um, Lois and Clark with, you know, the new adventures of Superman, which is Superman's a DC um, comic thing as well. Um, so anyway, it's fun. It's one of those shows where, you know, you need, like, it, it fits my requirements of current, of shows. Like, I, it has to be kind of something I already know. <laughs> so I don't have to learn any characters, and it's just easy. Um, I can have it on in the background without having to pay too close attention to it. There's no huge drama plot lines or like like a movie or something that I'd have to actually, or like a now TV show where I have to super pay attention and, you know, eyes attached to it all the time. Like, so it can't be any of those. I don't want a laugh track, so it can't be so old that it has a laugh track. Ugh. Um, anyway, fits the bill. And I'm having fun oh yeah and there's a zillion episodes in every season and there's this one only has like four seasons but still like 28 episodes or something per season that's that's gonna get me get me a little bit of time there <laughs> yes that's the one with dean kane oh your daughter is in the middle in middle school and her and her friends were obsessed oh my god that's so freaking funny gina Ugh. That's funny. Yep, so, uh, <laughs> it's just cute. Actually, I could see, I could see, uh, um, like, middle school girls and, and just any kids sort of, well, not any kids, but, like, that age group totally liking it now, too. It's, it's got that perfect nostalgia it's it's got that 90s looks to it all too so you got you got all the fashion <laughs> uh, which is really fun to watch and it's just cute and sweet and fun and anyway I am very much enjoying it again but yeah I remember when it wasn't <laughs> wasn't wasn't a rerun I'm watching it then and, and liking it so when it popped up I'm like eh that fits my parameters. Let's let's binge watch that. Sometimes you need a good binge show to get you through uh, through some days, right? Alright, let's... Oh, I thought that was my joining, but it's not yet. I just gotta watch all these silly seam allowances so they don't flip over. There we go. Yeah, it's Dean Kane and um, Terry Hatcher, and she's freaking awesome in it. She's, uh, you know, Lois. Lois Lane. Anyway, it's fun. I don't know if you guys saw, I sent in, uh, Jenna, <laughs> we sent an email out today, Jenna sent it, uh, we have our, uh, PDFs of the flowers are all ready, so those cute flower embroideries that we were stitching last week, um, the ones that I'm gonna be sending to my friends, uh, for our art swap, uh, I got the PDFs done yesterday and, and Jenna put them up on the site. So those are available. I know some of you guys requested PDFs and uh, bundles will be going out 
um, some of them have gone out, and uh, I more paper is coming tomorrow, and I'll be getting the rest of it out um, then. So kits are on their way, just about. I'm really excited for those, though. I want to do a tons more floral patterns. That was just, and the, that small size is just really fun and compact and easy. I like it. All right. Done with that final row. Let's press it. Okay, and then we'll get the, get the, um, let's flip. Get the borders out and do those borders. All right, and then I'll flip this around so we can see it too again after we're done pressing. I'm actually gonna flip it this way. I don't like pressing up like that. I'm gonna press down towards me. Have the weight of weight of this kind of help pull pull it a bit. Okay. Oh, Gretchen said that she got her PDFs today. Yay, good. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, Jennifer, that it's jumping in and out. Um, I think we're fine on, on YouTube still. Or you might want to try that. All right, let's scooch it over. I'll try and back up a little bit. I'll, I'll try and show you guys the front of this. I don't know if it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna fit in the camera. I'm gonna have to take a photo of it when I'm done or tomorrow when it's sun shining out, hopefully. <laughs> Ooh, let's snip this. And um, then you can see what it's, what it's looking like. I should get the um, front of the quilt out too so we can see them together. I don't have floor space, enough floor space to actually see them together, but I can, layer them <laughs> next to each other and we can get a kind of a glimpse of them. That'd be kind of fun. As far as, oh here, let me um, let me show you guys this quick. So, here we go. Hello. Let me hold this up and see if you can see it. Get way back here, sort of way back here. Okay. So we have the middle. You know, you can kind of see that little cross. So it's it's super big. It should be. This is going to be the whole back of a, a queen size quilt, but we got, I think we're going to have the effect of a big granny square in here. So I know it's, <laughs> it's, it's too big to see. Uh, but anyway, we're on our way with it. So I think it's going well. Okay. We have, uh, yeah, we have that, that middle diamond shape. I think it's being called out by the white quite, quite a bit. So I think we got it. Uh, we'll see. Like I said, I'll take a photo tomorrow. Um, all right, let's, um, get the border stuff out. So these are our remaining, um, remaining kind of corners that we're going to do. So let's kind of pick like how we want the corners. Yep, we still have the neutral thread, so I haven't run out of my thread quite yet, Amy. Oh, and she says, I forgot to say I love the song you paired with the Chad Kitty. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you, if anyone's been on TikTok, actually, it's kind of funny. I was going to say that you might know this trend, but John's trends on TikTok are totally different than the trends that I see. So maybe you haven't seen this trend on TikTok, but there's the, here comes the boy. <laughs> And it's, it's a cute little song. Someone originally sang it when uh, um, 
the neighborhood cat like came walking towards her and uh, then it's been remixed by other people which is just such a fun a neat thing about about TikTok uh, and it's become a, like a super duper popular song that's meant for when you see kitties walking towards you <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a video of your cat walking towards you, then it, you gotta play the Here Comes the Boy, and there's a Here Comes the Girl version now, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, Kimberly says, shouldn't I fold it back up so I don't wreck all my ironing? I mean, I, I, I think my, my seams will stay where, where I want them, and I'm gonna sew it, like, again here real quick, uh, so I didn't, I didn't bother um, putting it all together. I'm gonna ultimately iron the whole thing again, um, when, when I'm right before I sandwich everything together. So it doesn't have to be perfectly ironed. The ironing in the past of it was more to get the, the seams going in the right direction. All right. So I've put, put these borders behind me. So I need two borders, uh, one for the top and bottom. I, I kind of like how these are just like this. So I think I'm going to just leave them. Although now I'm immediately switching it. I don't know. <laughs> this is fine. Whatever. It's not going to matter. Uh, the quilt can be seen at any, like it's it's square, so it's not going to matter what angle it goes at. And it looks like we've been pressing these seams open. Maybe we should have pressed all our other seams open. But we, we just need these on two borders, like a top border and a, and a bottom border. Yeah, I hate ironing. That's why I'm not going to um, press it again now or that's why I'm not kind of worrying about it now because I know for sure I'll be ironing it again later so um, I just needed to get those seams right so I could sew things better the final press will will um, do all right so I'm just gonna clip these I'm gonna just clip all four four of these all at once so these are just gonna be on the top and bottom so first really before before we're, we sew these on, we have to sew the two sides on. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but at least this little sewing will be out of the way and we'll have like four complete borders and then we can just worry about sewing, sewing um, the borders and be done. All right, so this is the right side. Let's flip this around. So right now we'll sew, sew these corners on to both top and bottom borders and then press. Then it'll be the big sewing of it all together. We will get the um, sides first and then these will be the tops and bottoms. Ugh, it's gonna be a pile of matching again. We're gonna have to like find the centers and um, yeah, it's gonna be a whole whole thing after we're done with these. So good, I'm getting, I'm getting the fun parts done with these, and then it's gonna be yeah the part that I'm not too wild about, folding these giant pieces in half, finding centers, and dealing with all that. Just takes time, time that I'd rather be sewing. But whatever, it's part of the process. Guess I'll live with it. All right, this is our third one. And then we'll just, I'll sew the two sides and then get take them off and then do the other two sides. Oh gosh, there's so many seams in this one. That's why we had to piece all these together. I, I didn't have enough fabric to just do like nice long strips. So it's a crazy piecing it all together. I think that this, though, I will sew with the the um, um, crazy pieced ones at the bottom because, in general, I think they're bigger. And then, then we have the big pieces on the bottom, so that it'll stretch all nicely. I want one more clip for right there. Yeah, I like that video of Chad. My brothers liked it. They both commented on it. Um, they don't get to see. They don't get to see Chad. 
when they're not there. All right, let's, uh, I'm just gonna stack these two on top of each other. We'll do both and then uh, um, we'll get the other ones. All right, back to the machine. Ugh, so much bulk. All right, let's do it. Oh, I just did the opposite of what I just said I wasn't gonna do. I was gonna do the, um, the piece side on the bottom. Oh, well, jeez. That was a quick forgetfulness. Um, so I will do that on the next one. Ugh, and these are already sewing pretty w oddly. I have a, a weird extra piece on this one. Feels like. All right. So screwed up the first one already. Let's flip this. Oh, I kind of pinned them upside down then too, but oh well. There. We'll do it this way. So now in theory, um, my machine should help like stretch everything into place. If, if in fact the bottom is bigger, the bottom pieced, pieced one. That's the first two sides. I'm gonna just snip the one that we already did here and um, get the other side of it. Put that on the bottom again. <laughs> uh, Kimberly says, Chad Kitty looked so adorable like a playboy. Uh, strutting to the music and hiding in the plants. Too cute. Yeah, we discovered um, mom has a big plant there. I think it's a, like mums or something. I don't, I don't remember. I'm not good at all those kind of fallish flowers. Uh, but we discovered that Chad just chills in the mums or, or whatever the, that plant is. Uh, just, it's it's a big bush and, and he just... Uh, hangs out in there when it's too too warm or something or he just doesn't want to be seen <laughs> so he went there a few times we noticed and I peeked in there and he looked up so yeah that that shot was just kind of fun and then the other one was just by the garden oh and you could see my mom's um zinnias and uh some of the coral bells in that video too uh, which is what I modeled those flowers after, her zinnias and, and coral bells, the flower embroideries. So that was kind of neat. So nice to see Chad Kitty, and he was so talkative too when we were there. He's got like sweet little baby meows. All right, border sewn. Let's get a leader. I think I ran out, so I gotta get get another one. Or I don't have any started one. I'm not quite. I haven't quite run out of all my um, cut squares here, but I'm almost out again. I'm gonna have to cut some more. We're gonna need a, a week to clean up to like prep those pieces and stuff again soon. All right, so we got our two border pieces. Let's um, press them. It looks like a pile of crazy right here, but we got them. Oop, and there's a leader hanging out here. Let's get him. All right, so I mean, we pressed these other ones open, these other seams, so I suppose might as well press these. Yeah, now I'm gonna press it towards the, just the way that it, it kind of, oops, sorry you guys. I'm gonna press it just the way it wants to lay. So all of these seams 
like this has so many seams going sideways they're gonna want to push push the um, fabric that way so I'm just gonna go with it so there's that one let's rotate this around so I'm, I am gonna set aside these pieces when I'm done here because I want to sew the um, sides on first Ooh, you guys I'm not sure we're gonna quite finish tonight all that all those sides are gonna take us a while to get together but I may um, we'll see because I'd love to be able to um, sandwich this soon so maybe I'll just try and finish it but I don't know we'll see Kimberly says, I think you need to get a cat. Yeah, except for here, it would have to be an indoor cat, and I'm not as wild about that. <laughs> we have too much stuff that I don't want cat hair around. All right, our two top borders are done. So they'll have these little squares on. So these will get probably chopped down quite a bit more once they're in the quilt. I think they're gonna end up around eight inch squares from the 11. Um, so I don't know. We're gonna have to do a, a, as good of a job as we can to um, to center our quilt front when we do this. Um, just so everything matches up so we are, we're nice and square in the back because we did kind of make a square back here all right you guys let's attempt to center everything here so i am going to now take get rid of my numbers now that i have this kind of lined up i'm going to put two sides on um, one at a time and then we'll work on that top and bottom piece. I don't, I don't think we'll get that far though, but we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna save my little numbers for another project for another time. Okay, so this is the uh, um, center square. So I'm gonna just use that as my guide. I'm gonna center the seams. And actually, I think I might get the iron. Oh gosh, it's like not quite on the fold here. Oh, it almost is, but not quite. So I'm gonna get the iron and just kind of press a little like tick mark in basically. So that fold is the center of my row or what it's what I'm gonna call the center of my row. Okay, so I'm gonna grab one of these, what was it like 50, three and a half inches or 51 and a half, something like that. Let's get this and fold it in half. I wanna find the center of this one as well. Okay, and let's mark that. Okay, so now I wanna match up these two centers and then from there, I'm going to match up the ends and we're going to just try and work our way from the center out, um, trying to get these things to match up. So, all right, there's our centers. So let's clip that. <sighs> all right, not wild about this process, but it's part of the process. Okay, so... Actually, I'm gonna remove these now. I think they're gonna be too bulky and in my way. Might need them later though. Okay, I want my piece to lay flat on the table here so I can more accurately get those lined up. So let's start with the end. So theoretically, these should be exactly the same size, but you know, I was sewing that other one together and 
My seam allowances might not be perfect. Would help if I matched it up. There we go. All right, so now I just kind of want to find the centers of these points. So if like one side's bigger or smaller than the other, I kind of want to equalize that out. So I'm just kind of not super pulling on it, but a little bit and just walk into the center here. I think that's a decent center of those. And let's do that again. I think let's just get like two more in here. Actually, I think we could probably get away with just the one. Yeah. Let's just go right there. So, okay. That's good. Get the center here. Match up everything. It's actually looking pretty decent as far as things matching. All right, let's do from this side on. the edges so they end up together. All right, I think this will be our center here. It's not looking like we have to do much correction, so that's that's what I like to see. And I think we're fine here too. All right, let's sew this edge. We could pin the other one right away, but I'd rather I'd rather trade off. I'd rather have something sewn. Okay. Here we go. And let me get that glove on again. That That is rather helpful. There, with the pins farther apart, I can kind of sew longer to the next one. That's nice. Whoop, a little far there. Forgot that my machine doesn't stop perfectly right away. Kind of has a slow roll at the end of it when I lift up on the pedal. There's a couple more stitches, like three more stitches that happen. We'll definitely try and get the other border side on, but then I think we'll probably stop there because I got we'll have to like press the seams and um, do all that before putting on the other the other sides so I think I might just um, press or not press I think I'm gonna just sew the second um, border on the second side and then next time I work on this uh, maybe we'll work on it the last week of the month just to get it done um, but for that, I will, uh, we got to press them and then get those other two borders on. So didn't finish tonight, but we're getting, getting further. So I'll, I'll uh, take a photo of it though tomorrow. Um, so, so we can see it still over on the facey pages. Match that up again. Not too shabby. Let's uh, get another leader going here. All right. There 
There we go. Get this leader. All right, this should start framing it up though nicely. Let's just kind of take a peek. I'm not gonna press it yet. But there, there's our big blue border. So we're gonna have a big kind of blue corner and then it's gonna start getting that that stair steppy diagonal in, just like our our granny square blocks. Yeah, good, good, good. All right, let's just rotate this whole thing around. I wanna make sure that I am actually across and I didn't twist it. Okay. Didn't want to accidentally get it on the other side. All right, let's uh, get a mat out again here. Find our centers. And uh, I want to try and get this last side um, sewed on tonight yet. So I got to work fast here. I'm just marking that center. right there and border number two oh. <laughs> let's match up the correct corners to each other there we go I have not done a scalloped before to or <laughs> Border. <laughs> border before. Wow, that's funny. I just combined before and border into beforeder. Uh, I've not done a scalloped border before. No, uh, but they are gorgeous. I would love to try one. We'll have to do like a small project where I where I give that a go. For those, you need an actual like your your um, binding needs to be an actual bias binding, I believe. Um, which means you have to do it on where you have to cut your bias at an angle to get the stretchy stretchiness that you want in a bias binding because you're going around all those curves. So it's a little bit different thing. I just want to make sure I have right sides together. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let's match up all these bits. I'm going to move this mat again, but let's get this first one. Let me know if any of you have done a bias, or not a bias, um, well, that too, if you've done a bias strip binding. I'm not even sure I've done that. Um, huh. We got some things to try. Um, or if you've done a scalloped border edge. Well, what the heck? This did not work. Am I on the wrong edge? What the heck? All right, I clearly didn't mark the center. What did I mark? Oh, maybe that was just like a not, <laughs> my center, there it is, geez. I just grabbed any, wait a sec. I think right here. It just wasn't um, pressed very well there and I matched that point up. That means it's getting about quitting time if I'm making weird mistakes like that. All right, clip in the end. There, that looks better. Let's equalize this out. And we'll sew our last seam, get it done. Again, this is looking pretty well good. I don't have to equalize it out very much at all.
Oh, wait, uh, Gretchen says, I always make a bias binding. I thought someone says it's stronger. Oh, that's interesting. Um, that could totally be true. I have no idea. Um, Amy says, I did a bias binding. Oh, because I used stripe fabric and wanted the stripes in a diagonal. Okay, so that sounds familiar. I, I think I've done that before. So yeah, that would have had to have been a bias binding. So that's a really fun trick. Um, you can make, if, if you have a striped fabric, if you cut your um, strips to make the binding on the bias, which is that 45 degree angle, there's, there's tricks to do that. But um, if you cut it at that 45 degree angle, then instead of looking like stripes going around um, your, your, um, your quilt, like with the binding, they'll look like a candy cane. So they'll all be at a diagonal, um, and it's just so cute, that diagonal uh, on the bias. Striped fabric. Cute, cute, cute. All right, we got it. Let's sew this together, and then we got our two sides on. That's what I'll take a picture of tomorrow, and I'll lay out the, um, I'll lay out the top and bottom borders that we sewed earlier. Um, I'll lay those next to it and take a photo tomorrow. Oh, let's get that glove on again. Ugh, I'm just happy to be this far on this project. So next week we'll be working on the granny, or not the, um, not the granny square quilt, the um, Splendid Sampler 2 quilt again. Maybe we can tick a few more uh, blocks off the list, or maybe at least one, one more off the, off of our list. I think we still are in the 30s of the uh, amount we still have to go on that. We didn't have to do the whole bobbin thing tonight. Kimberly says, I love striped bindings. It makes it look like a candy cane. Yeah, they're so freaking cute. It adds just like such a sweet finish to a quilt, I think. I should do that more often. We'll have to make a bias binding at some point here. I would like to try that scalloped edge, though. I, I for sure have not done that. How do you measure how much you need for the binding when it's a scalloped edge? That that'd be a little bit of a trick. You'd have to do like real math, like circumferences and <laughs> diameters and stuff. And multiply that by the number of um scallops. All right, here we are. I mean, this quilt gets squished up when we're sewing it like this too. So we'll definitely need to iron again. All right, let's take a peek. There's this side opened up. There we go. <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm gonna hold this up again. It's just getting big. 
Um, but yeah, so we'll have this big blue area. So we're framing, framing out um, our fun little like single uh, granny square in the middle here. <laughs> so that is that. All right, you guys, let's see if I can hold this up a little. I do like that kind of white square in the middle. It's not in the middle, but like the white framing that middle square. So we got all our big, our big um, pieces here. <laughs> it's too, too big to hold up at this point, which is good. It's a good position to be in uh, at this point, so that's good. So I will uh, take a photo of this tomorrow with the little, the borders that I still have behind me. Um, I'll see what that looks like on the top and bottom. And uh, we're much further than we were at the beginning of the week, so that's great. <laughs> So awesome. And thanks again, you guys. Um, I will be back on Monday. Uh, just another reminder that we do have the PDFs available for the uh, for those flower summer blooms embroideries. And stay tuned. We're going to have a holiday bundle, like a re-release of uh, our some holiday patterns coming up here uh, soon. So stay, stay tuned for some uh, emails on that. So thanks again, everyone. Have a fabulous weekend, and I'll see you again uh, Monday at 8.30 Central. Good night.